In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add remediation to your software simulations. A few weeks ago, I had a client of mine reach out to me for some one-on-one -on -one instruction. And one of the challenges that she faced was the ability to have a demo software simulation where they show, of course, the steps and the procedures, and then a training software simulation where the learner is then provided an opportunity to perform those steps themselves. And they wanted to add remediation to those training portions so that if the learner appeared to be struggling, in other words, taking too many attempts to click on all those click boxes or enter all those text entry boxes, that they would have an opportunity to go back to the demo and watch those procedures again to make sure that they got it right. So I recommended this solution and hopefully you can benefit by this as well. Let's take a look. Okay, so I recorded a software simulation of just booking a trip through one of these trip sites that's available on the web, pretending, of course, that this was the tool that maybe a customer service agent was using. So I recorded a demo, and of course, that creates all the mouse clicks and all the highlight boxes and so forth. And then I added narration. In this case, I used an AI voice from Well Said Labs. If you're interested in the voice, I have a link down in the description so you can check that out yourself. But you'll see how I set this up. So you can see the voice is there in the middle. I put a half second pause or, or blank spot between the beginning and the end. I had the highlight box when the narration is spoken. And I have this caption appear for the same period of time as the highlight box, but it does display for the rest of the slide. And then my mouse movement is the final step on each slide. And I've adjusted it depending on how far the mouse needs to travel. So obviously on a slide like this, where it's going from a tab to the first item within that drop-down box, it's relatively short and a little bit longer if you're moving across the entire screen. Simultaneously, and this is one of the great benefits of Adobe Captivate, I recorded the training portion at the same time. So instead of creating on-screen mouse movements and uh, typing in fields and stuff like that, it actually creates an interactive uh, demonstration that you participate in by using click boxes and text entry boxes. In this case, it's just click boxes. So for each one, again, I added similar narration to all of the slides. I modified my hint caption to just sort of highlight, you know, as the learner rolled their mouse over those click boxes, they'd see click here. And then, of course, an incorrect caption uh, displayed if they fail to get this one right. Now, I went and I selected all of these slides from my film strip, and then I copied them and then pasted them at the end of the demo. The demo will become my main project. And then, of course, uh, the next bit of uh, work that was required was to create these remediation overlays. Because I wanted to let someone know, you know, not just incorrect and suddenly jump back to the demo. I wanted to let them know it looks like you're having some trouble with this step. Press the retry button to return to the demo. So they clearly understood what was happening. How I built this overlay is it's a combination of several things. First of all, it's a smart shape that covers the entire slide, as you can see here. I set it to be white with a white stroke around it, which really won't be seen anyway. But I set the transparency or opacity, if you will, at 50%. So we can kind of see through, but of course it's blocking the background stuff. The next object I created was this rounded rectangle shape, which kind of matches the colors of the website. And I added the text. It looks like you're having some trouble, etc. And then the third object is actually a shape used as a button. So I've created that. I've called it retry and use as button. And of course, I've set the action for that to jump to slide one, which is when the show me demo begins. I also like to click the hand cursor and disable the click sound. 
And I usually do this for all items of the same type. So you don't hear that click sound and your cursor changes when you roll over these buttons. So that was really easy to do. And I duplicated that on all of the slides and, uh, and I grouped it together. So it was treated like a single object. So you can see here, caption one and on two, it's caption two, on three, it's on caption three and so on. So for each of these slides, when you arrive on the slide, the first thing I needed to do was run this little shared action. And this shared action is based on an advanced action I created. All it does is hide the caption, the overlay caption that you see here. So uh, I converted this as a shared action so I could use it over and over again. Shared actions are essentially like fill in the blank advanced actions. So you're really just saving the structure and filling in, in this case, which object you want that shared action to hide. So that's happening on each slide. So every time I return to one of these slides or visit it for the first time, it's going to hide this overlay item here. Now, uh, on each of these slides is a click box. You can just make it out here with the timeline open. You can select that click box and I've made a couple of small changes. Instead of infinite attempts, I set this to have two attempts. And on that last attempt, it's going to execute my shared action show caption, which simply will show this same overlay. And again, if you create that shared action, all you need to do is select which caption that you're creating here or showing. So press save and that's done. The other thing I did was disable the click sound, but otherwise this is just a standard click box that you would see on any software simulation slide. So here we're showing caption two and here we're showing caption three and so on. So let's test this out and see how it works. And I think you'll see the benefit of adding remediation to your software simulations. We'll do this in HTML5, of course. Let's book that vacation based on the customer's requirements. Select the Vacation Packages tab. Select Classic Vacation Grid. Select All Hotel Chains. Select Bahia Principe Hotels and Resorts. Select 7 to 8 Days. Select Bahia Principe Fantasia Punta Cana. Select March. Select March 8th to March 15th. Select the departing date for the lowest price. Select book now. Congratulations, you booked the vacation. Okay, now it's your turn to book the vacation for the customer's requirements. You will get two tries for each step. Select the vacation packages tab. Okay, so uh, it's me now moving the mouse and clicking on this to perform the steps. And of course I have two tries to get it right. Of course, I get my hint shape, which is helpful there. Select Classic Vacation Grid. In this case, I'll get the first attempt at this wrong. Maybe I click on Caribbean Vacations. That's incorrect. And we'll get it right this time. Classic Vacation Select Grid. Select All Hotel Chains. And we'll make a... Select Bahia Principe Hotels and let's, Resorts. Let's make a wrong selection here. No, that's not right. Maybe it's this one. I'm incorrect again. Looks like I'm having some trouble with this step. Press the retry button to return to the demo. And of course, now I'll have a chance to review the demo and see where I went wrong. Let's book that vacation based on the customer's requirements. Select the Vacation Packages tab. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.